it is Sir Jaxie, and today we are playing Dragon Age Origins. Now the reason for playing this game now and doing the Let's Plays, as some of you may know, or many of you may know, or some of you may not know, Dragon Age 3 has been announced. I believe it's due out sometime next year, the same as with The Witcher 3. I could be wrong though, I need to look into that a little bit better. But along the same tokens, I've decided to do a Let's Play with Dragon Age alongside with The Witcher. So we'll be alternating uploads and content around. Now the same as with The Witcher, Dragon Age is a very decision-based storyline. So the decisions you make determine the outcome of the game. It also, same as with The Witcher, the content m can be imported into the next game within the series and therefore basically determining your outcome in the second game in the series and then ultimately the third game in the series. A couple of things here on the login screen I'd like to point out is that right now I'm logged in. Um, what this is is I'm logged into my EA account. So it says here, logging into your BioWare slash EA online account allows you to access online features such as screenshot uploads, content offers, your profile, and achievements. Okay, that's all well and good that they give you those neat little things. The biggest thing with that though is you have to be logged in to access the downloadable content. Now this is Dragon Age Origins, the Ultimate Edition. So that means I have all of the downloadable content already included within the game. So I have to be logged in in order to use, get access to that. Uh, the game also takes and comes with um, you can play other campaigns. You can play Witch Hunt, Dragon Age Awakening. That actually was released as a game all of its own. It was basically a filler game between the end of Dragon Age and the beginning of Dragon Age 2. You can play the Darkspawn Chronicles, Lilina's Song, and the Golems of Ar Armgarok. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah that place. So we're not going to be playing any of those, but I did want to point those out. Just point out the options really quick within the game. There are four difficulty levels, easy, normal, hard, and nightmare. Nightmare setting is intended for tactical geniuses, according to Bioware, who found hard difficulty, well, too easy. Uh, that's not me. I do not play these games for the combat. I play them for the storyline and the exploration and those things. So I just usually play on normal. I don't go as far as playing on easy because I do, you know, know how to do combat and I do enjoy combat. And unfortunately, I do die sometimes a little too frequently. The other nice thing with this is that you can actually decide whether or not you want your plot assistant off or to show plot helpers only in explored areas or to show plot helpers basically everywhere. I only put them in explored areas. I don't like to be led into areas. Um, you can ena enable persistent gore. What that does is basically any blood and gore you get on you during a combat, well, it stays there until you change your armor. So you're walking through the town with blood and gore all over you gonna leave that on for now just to show what it's like personally it's not my favorite option all the time so I may shut it off down the road um, you can take and set the game to automatically pause at the start of combat I usually don't do that because if I want to pause it I'll pause it to set up who's attacking who um, I do set up to save automatically I show shimmer around objects with loot because I don't want to miss any loot uh, I do show damage party 
and damage to enemies and floating spell and talent names and also the tutorials because I haven't played this in about two years. I never actually played it all the way through. Reason being is this is an EA game. Uh, and unfortunately I bought it from EA which means that it is loaded on my computer through Origins. And anybody who plays games through Origins knows that up until recently it was extremely frustrating to play any game through Origins. Um, even now it can be very very frustrating but they have improved it a lot. Um, I do have subtitles on for conversations only. Uh, and then here's your your basic key bindings. You can take and set up key bindings like your F1s for selecting different party members and shift F1s and all that good stuff. I'm not going to mess with that. Audio settings, I got pretty well set up. I do force stereo sound for my headphones. Hopefully it won't cause a problem with the recording. Um, video, as you can see, it's set to 1920 by 1080. I am playing in full screen mode. Right now I'm leaving vertical sync off. And I've got everything set to very high and anti-aliasing at 4x. Um, and frame buffer effects I honestly am not sure what they do it basically says that it enables special effects that require the frame buffer disabling this can improve frame rate <laughs> okay but what do you lose by doing it they don't say and then online is basically your connection you know upload gameplay feedback download previously purchased content and then with your profile, take achievement and story screenshots. Notify me when screenshots are taken. Upload screenshots. Automatically upload screenshots to your online profile. And upload character profile. So, without any further ado, 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 let's play Dragon Age Origins. And here, as you can see, you get your choice of Dragon Age Origins or Dragon Age Awakening, which comes after that. And so is the Golden City blackened. With each step you take in my hall, marvel at perfection, for it is fleeting. You have brought sin to heaven and doom upon the world. Canticle of Theodoris, 813. The Chantry teaches us that it is the hubris of men which brought the Darkspawn into our world. The mages had sought to usurp heaven, but instead they destroyed it. They were cast out, twisted and cursed by their own corruption. They returned as monsters, the first of the Darkspawn. They became a blight upon the lands, unstoppable and relentless. The Dwarven Kingdoms were the first to fall, and from the deep roads, the Dark Spawn drove at us again and again, until finally we neared annihilation. from every race, warriors and mages, barbarians and kings. The Grey Warden sacrificed everything to stem the tide of darkness and prevail. Has 
been four centuries since that victory, and we have kept our vigil. We have watched and waited for the Darkspawn to return. But those who once called us heroes have forgotten. Funny how everybody forgets. We are few now, and our warnings have been ignored for too long. Seen with my own eyes what lies on the horizon. Maker, help us all. Okay, so let's see. The backgrounds you select will determine which of the six distinct opening stories you play through. It also affects how characters respond to you throughout the game. So, do we want to play a Sir Jaxi or a Lady Jaxi? Okay, I'm not sure which we want to play. Uh, let's play Sir Jaxi. So now the question is, do we want to play a human, an elf? Or a dwarf. Okay, I think we're gonna play an elf, because I'm probably gonna play an archer of some sort. So let's see, class warrior, mage, or rogue. You don't get to be an archer? Uh oh. Or dwarf options. Uh, dwarfs can only be warriors or rogues. And humans can be all three. Dwarfs can't be mages. Poor dwarves. Huh. A dwarf commoner or a dwarf noble. I'm not gonna play a dwarf. Huh. Rogues. Are skilled adventurers who come from all walks of life. All rogues possess some skill in picking locks and spotting traps, making them valuable assets to any party. Tactically, they are not ideal for frontline fighters, but if rogues can circle around behind their targets, they can backstab. Uh, okay. Man, I'll tell you, the humans look an awful lot like the elves. The elves are just shorter. Okay, so... A rogue or a mage? And with a mage, we can only take and be magi. Is that the same with humans? Human mage, magi, yep. And dwarves can't be mages. So, we're going to be an elf rogue. So, do we want to be Dalish? Proud of your role as one of the few true elves. You have always assumed you would spend your life with your tribe. Until a chance encounter with a relic of your people's past threatens to tear you away from everything you have ever known. Or should we be a city elf? You have always lived under the heavy thumb of your human overlords. But when a local lord claiming his privilege with the bride shatters your wedding day, the shimmering racial tension explodes in a rain of vengeance. Oh, <laughs> that one sounds cool. Yes, we will play the city elf. Okay. Greetings. Next. Greetings. Presets. Okay. Can I use my keys to do this? No. Crap. Okay. I want an elf looking face, not a human looking face. Well, that's a little more elfish than any of them. Eh, I like that one. This 
que... Tattoos. I like that tattoo. Tattoo color. Having to click through all these, it's kind of annoying. And I do apologize. Oh, what happened? Or up its skin. I don't want the tattoo there. That one looks good. Tattoo intensity. Yeah, see, I want too intense. Now I gotta change the color because the color I had changed. The color looks different. When you pull down the intensity. There, that looks good. Hair. What do we want for hair? Don't like that hairstyle so well. I like the color though. No. Okay. Well, as you can see, customization is very. Well, I wouldn't say very, but is rather in depth for a game of this nature. I like that. I like the, that color. Eyebrows. Too bushy. No eyebrows. Uh, no. Well, I'll go with those. Gotta have some eyebrows. There we go. Eyes. I'm not gonna worry about the eye shape. I am gonna take and change the color. Let's see if we could give him blue eyes. Ooh, nice, right there. I like those. I'm not gonna worry about the nose. Even though his nose is a little wide. Let's bring down the width. There, much more elf-like. Mouth. Uh, we'll leave that. I'm not going to get into all this, but as you can see, you can change you know, the cheekbone depth, chin depth, chin height, neck and ears. I mean, just a lot of stuff. Got to bring his neck thickness down a little, though, because he is an elf. You can even change the portrait back background. I like blue, so we're going to go there. The expression of them on the portrait. Oh yeah, that's mean looking. <laughs> no, man, you could get some really distorted looks here. I just want a neutral look. I guess that's neutral enough. Move up or down. Oh, you could take him all the way out of the portrait almost. Move left or right. Like him kind of centered. Camera distance. There, that's good. Turn left or right. There. Look up or down. His whole shoulders move when he looks. <laughs> that's funny. Okay, and the voice. Why? I have lost concentration. How do you do? Cocky. Oops. Where is my head? Experience. Greetings. Well, that didn't work. Mystical. Greetings. Blast it! I have lost the spell. Swab. Charmed, I'm sure. Ah! There went the spell. This weapon does nothing. Violent. Greetings. Oh, my spell! What does it take to kill these things? How that's a violent voice? Somebody has to explain that to me. We're, we're going to sure. be suave. 
Okay. Now I have five points to spend. Since I'm a rogue, I'm going to want to put two of them into dexterity. And probably one into constitution and two... I mean, one into cunning and two into constitution. That looks about right. Ah! Ability points we get to spend right off the bat. Coercion. Requires ten cunning. The character is influenced... Influential enough to converse... Convince others. Man, I can't read today. Anyway, poison making we automatically get. Um, let's see. Herbalism. Survival. The character can detect the presence of nearby creatures below the character's own level. Interesting. Trap making. Stealing. Or combat training. Um, what good's a rogue who can't steal? <laughs> we'll go that route. Wait, what did that say? Nope, oh, nothing. Okay. And then we get two points for our rogue class. I gotta put. We're gonna do archery. Requires combat training. Okay, was that over here? Combat tactics. Ah, combat training. Okay. So we're gonna clear that out and we're gonna put that into combat training. So that's. Uh, eh, whatever. And then we're gonna go do archery. Melee archery, melee archer. Passive requires dex experience. Fighting in tight quarters has taught the archer to fire without interruption. Pinning shot. A shot to the target's legs disables the foe. Pinning the target in place unless it passes a physical resistance. And rapid shot. Rapid shot. Is, yeah, we're going to do a rapid shot. Oh, and we got one more spent too. Um, gotta go with pinning shot, and then we can play. Difficulty level, already discuss that on normal. Pause the game space to issue orders to your party. You can queue up the action for each member of your party. Those actions will execute when the game resumes. Very useful. Denerim, the largest city and capital of Ferelden. Long ago, the elves lived as slaves to humans, and though they've been free for many generations now, they are far from equals. Here they live in a walled-off community known as the Alienage, working as servants and laborers when they can. Despite these hardships, Denerim's elves are a strong people who take pride in their close community. Yes, we do. This is the only world you've ever known. Until now. Wake up, cousin. Why are you still in bed? It's your big day. Huh, my hair was light darker than that in the character creation. <coughs> That's interesting. I wasn't going for blonde. I want more her color, hair color. Okay. So why am I still in bed? Hmm. Did I oversleep? Yes, your father and I figured you deserved it. You do remember what today is, don't you? Uh, summer day? Someone's wedding. Uh, according to your breath, it's get drunk before noon day. <laughs> oh, that's just mean. No, you idiot. You're getting married today. And <gasps> Soros, too. I am. That's what I came to tell you. Your bride, Nessiara, she's here early. Already? Huh. 
I don't like the idea of this arranged match business. And who else are you going to marry? Besides, I already snuck a peek. She's beautiful. There's going to be music, decorations, feasting. Weddings are so much fun. You're so lucky. Yeah. Maybe you should be the one getting married. All in good time, cousin. This is your day, not mine. All right, I'll stop tormenting you. I should go talk to the other bridesmaids and find my dress. Oh, Soros said that he'll be waiting for you outside. So move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Let's see. Tutorial tactical view. The game can be played from a variety of tactical viewpoints. Use the mouse wheel to bring your camera down to exploration mode. Scroll forward. And this is one of the things that people really was were upset about with Dragon Age 2. Is that they took out this particular view mode. And, well, quite frankly, they put roofs on. Whoosh. That's a cool whoosh. Okay, issuing orders. While well, pause, you can issue orders to your characters. Right click on your desired destination. Well, let's open the foot locker. Right. Right click, not left click. There we go. Unpause. While well, pause, you can issue order. Okay. Okay, we weren't supposed to open the foot locker. Your character has a move order. You can issue orders in real time or while pause. Press space to unpause now. Hey, look at that. We're saving my game. New quest. Chester Day gifts and credits. Exploration. Use the WASD keys to explore the world. Alternately, right click on the ground to select a destination. Okay. Try to open my journal. Let's try to close that. Right click to open, not left click. Inventory. Yes, take all. To equip items, you'll need to open the inventory to do so now by pressing I. Aye, aye, Captain. To unequip, drag an item from its icon on the left side of the screen back into your inventory. Remove your character's armor or clothing now. Okay, let's take his clothes off. There we go. Now he's naked. To equip items from your inventory directly onto your character or onto the appropriate space. Re Okay, wedding clothes. Put those back on. There we go. For easy access to consumables, place them in your quick bar. Health potion. Lesser health poultice. There we go. Okay, let's look around and see who we have to go talk to this dude over here, dude. Right click. Good morning, my son. It's your big day. Oh, I wish your mother could have been here. Um, could we talk about this arrangement? Still not pleased, I can see. Of course we can talk. Do I really have to get... Huh. Why can't I choose who I marry? Tradition, child. With so little contact between alienages and so few chances to travel, you must trust your elders. The dowry has been paid, the Chantry has issued the permit, and everything is ready. All we need is you. Uh, you paid a dowry for my pride? There's a lot to arranging marriages. Probably the biggest factor is deciding which spouse travels to which alienage. One side gets new blood and a new face, and the other side loses a family member. The dowry helps to even things out. Huh. I don't want to get married. <laughs> I understand. Before I met Adaya, 
I was ready to go hunt for the Dalish. Just be glad I chose the match. Without parents to represent you, children like your cousin Soros end up marrying whoever the Elder can find. I appreciate your efforts. All right, efforts. time for you to go find Soros. The sooner this wedding starts, the less chance you two have to escape. <laughs> a small chance still exists. A small chance is still a chance. <laughs> still have your mother's smart mouth, I see. Oh, one last thing before you go, son. Your martial training, the sword play, knives, and whatever else your mother trains you in, best not to mention it to your betrothed. I take it you didn't say anything? Well, it's not exactly something that would have made it easy to find a match for you. Well, we don't want to seem like troublemakers after all. Adaya made that mistake. The humans who killed her made a bigger one. Our world is full of so many injustices. Take this. Your mother would have wanted you to have it. It's the very least I can give you as you start your new life. Go on, then. I still have some things to do, and Soros is no doubt waiting for you. Okay. Well, don't sound like these elves have it too easy. Thank you for watching. This concludes this episode of Let's Play Dragon Age Origins. If you've liked the video, please do show us some love and click that like button below. Also, if you have yet to subscribe to our channel, please consider doing so so that you can be notified of all future episodes of Let's Play Dragon Age Origins, along with all of our other upcoming videos. As always, you can find me on the Twitter and at Facebook under Sir Jaxi. This has been Sir Jaxi, fading to black.